Welcome back to another Next Gear Show video. This one we're going to look at the DS7, which is a plug-in hybrid. So you got a petrol engine up front, battery power down the back, and you get the sort of best of both worlds. You can plug in, you can go 40 kilometers on battery. Maybe you don't like the look of some of the electric cars out there right now. Some of the ones just look a little bit weird. Some of them handle a little bit weird. They're all very efficient and all, but you know, when it comes out to taste, I think 80% of happy ownership is actually looking at the car. And this is devastatingly gorgeous. I have to say, I really love the look of it. It's a bit polarized in places, but I actually think it's one of the finest looking cars on the market at the moment. It actually handles really well as well. Don't forget, this is a fully independent channel. If you like what you're listening to, you like what you're watching, hit the subscribe button, share it with your friends, and let us know that you're out there because, you know, it's hard to be independent these days. We're one of the few independent channels in Ireland that actually operate all on our own. So, thanks for subscribing from everybody. List the links down below if you want to get there as well. Tell you what, let's have a look around the car before we get any further and get into the idea of what a PHEV does. So a quick word on the kind of bottom half of the car here, which I quite like to look up. This is the petrol caps. This is where you put your petrol and diesel in if you choose the diesel one. There's a 1.2 petrol one as well. You can choose all kinds. This is the PHV one. Put petrol on this side. But these doors open really rather wide. I kind of like that. You've got uh, window switches here and you've also got a way of reclining the seat here from a button, electrical button thing. And that's pretty cool to have in a car of this size. This car is the same car as the President of France gets chauffeured around in. So it's the same car, the DS7. So there, just so you know. 555 litres of boot space across the range, even in the PHEV, because the batteries don't actually consume any of the boot space within any of the range. There is also a handy way of closing the tailgate with either your foot or just press of a button. The tailgate is fully electric. And then down the bottom, they have exhaust that look a little bit like a Brillo pad. Not sure why. So I'm going to get into what I claim to be an opulent cabin. I know that sounds a little bit weird for me to say there's an opulence about it. It's luxurious. There's a lot going on. It's got this kind of sweep across here, which goes all the way across the dashboard. You've got the word opera here. Start buttons up here at the very top. All these kind of chromey things for opening windows and locking doors, locking windows and stuff. And then when you do actually start, you get that... that clock that appears up, that clock that goes zoom about the dashboard. Uh, it's an analog clock as well, it's a proper looking off-center, there's an 8 and a 4 and a 12 and it's a little bit quirky in that respect. Then you have this big touchscreen across the center which, you know I'm not a fan of touchscreens, so there is physical buttons underneath, but those physical buttons are only for doing things like temperature control and stuff. And even like if you want to turn on and off the heated seat, so you're driving and you touch the heated seat, that doesn't turn it on, that just brings up the temperature settings for the seat, which means it's two clicks. So to turn it on and to press it again, and to turn it off and to press it again till it goes away. Same for cooled seats. I just think there's too many button clicks. There's too much going on in the UI there for people to get on with. I can get on with most touchscreens, but... Mm. Steering wheel is full size. Thank you DS and Citroen for continuing to make the big steering wheel versus the Peugeot ones which have the small steering wheel. But this one is just a big size steering wheel, standard looking thing. It's so nice, it is so comfortable to drive this car. It's unbelievable. You get the gear stick out of basically everything from uh, Peugeot Citroen Alliance thing which is all here. Uh, then you have a USB port uh, which if I plug my phone into, I might be able to show you the integration. 17. So when I click that in there, that's my phone telling me how much battery's in it. So if I click that in there and it comes up on the screen, hopefully in a second, there she goes. Uh, so that goes up the screen and immediately it's playing stuff. Don't know what that is. That could be anything. Could be copyright for infringement there. But anyway, you can see that they blend in beautifully. Probably the nicest blending in of Apple CarPlay into the systems of the car. So the temperature stays on the outside here. Uh, and the heated seats and things. That all stays out there, but you're left with Apple CarPlay in the middle. I kind of like the way that's blended in nicely, so I don't have to get on with it, but my, of course my problem is, if you want to change the temperature, you're pressing that, then you're pressing that. It's two clicks to do essentially everything that should just be one click in the car. Just saying, not giving out to you, just pointing out the ministry, the bleeding obvious on that one, right? 
There's a funny little storage bin here. There's wireless charging in there, but the tray is, is it's small now. So th that's the problem with making a shaped tray for wireless charging. Uh, the minute you shape it, a bigger phone comes out and it doesn't fit in there anymore, or a smaller phone. Mine's an iPhone 12 Pro Max, so it's like the biggest one that you can get. I don't think the 13 Pro is any bigger, um, but it doesn't actually fit into the wireless charging tray. The wireless charging tray does detect the phone being there, but doesn't plug in. But anyway, I prefer wired charging, and the reason that is it's much more efficient than wireless charging, which just fires electricity into the space, and that's how it charges your phone. <laughs> Uh, you turn off the battery, you turn off the car, and the, the clock zooms away into the distance. Uh, this is a PHV, so we're going to test it on the road as well, and uh, we'll get on with a little bit of a spin in the car now, see what happens, right? So reasons to pick a PHEV would be you just don't like the look of battery powered vehicles or you just don't fancy taking the plunge yet for fear that the battery electric vehicle you buy will be outdated in a very short period of time which is which is kind of happening if you know what I mean they're, they're kind of moving them on very quickly but you know there's a good range of PHEVs on the market now but whether they suit you is another question entirely because you may not just want a battery vehicle maybe you like the sound of petrol maybe that's just it so PHEV suits you plus you've a much broader range of cars to choose from this comes in straight petrol I think it's only 1.2 and there's a diesel and there's this PHEV one as well you know whether that's what suits you or not suits you that's up to you I think more than anybody all I can tell you is if you're prepared to plug them in and I mean plug them in every day you can do phenomenal mileage on these jokes if your range is small. And I know that seems kind of weird, but I had a guy on, on Instagram tell me that he was doing 1,600 kilometers in his PHEV because he plugged it in every morning and every night. That's, and he just runs to and from work on batteries and then does the shopping. And so 1,600 kilometers to a tank of petrol. Forget about how much electricity's gone in, just the petrol part. And that included a trip down to uh, Wexford for a weekend away with the wife. A bit of, you know, hanky-panky going on there. But it was a weekend away with the wife. No judgments there whatsoever. Uh, and having great crack, you know? And that's what it comes down to. Plus, PHEV has a lot of poke. So the car uses both batteries. Put your foot down. And it'll pull you along. It's got good, like, return on investment for the amount of fuel you're going to stick into it. But thinking directly about the DS7, this is a beautiful interior, so well appointed. All these beautiful plastics up here. This is rubberized, by the way. And all this part here is just so well built. This is as good, if not better, than anything that's coming out of Germany currently in build quality alone. Seating position is supremely good. Comfort. 100%. I even have massage seats. I press a button down here and the seat goes, oh my god, I'm being massaged <laughs> by cat paws. Cat paw, wave, stretch, don't care. Hit me with high. Go on, hit me there. Go on, go again. <gasps> oh. Oh. You know when a cat when you're petting the cat and it starts to mash you. It mashes up and down with its feet. That's going on in my back now. I mean, come on. Who doesn't want that in the car? Especially when it's this quiet in here. There's, there's a bus. Look at them people on the bus. Look at them. Fragile, alone, tired, slightly smelly. Why would you want a bus over a car? Really? This is, you can get one point, they say 1.5 liters per kilometers out of this car, which I actually kind of believe, because every time I charge it up, I've gone beyond its 40 kilometer range now, but every time I charge it up, it just wafts along on electricity. Uh, and then it seems to claw back electricity whenever it can to do what it's trying to do as well. This is a really good car. And like I say, if you're not ready for the plunge for electricity, you can charge this from a three pin plug, by the way. You don't need to, 
to plug it into a big wall socket for the bed. That's optimum is to plug it into a proper wall socket designed for the job, but you don't actually have to. It's not that important. But thank you all for subscribing and thank you to the new patrons who've come along as well and the old patrons who have been there all along. You've been brilliant. Uh, lots of new equipment and new looks and new abilities and new <gasps> speed van in the edge of Montrevin. Would you believe it? A speed van. What a scummy place to catch people just on the corner. That's a, that was a really scummy move now. Tell you, 50 km, 50, I was doing 51, but 50 km an hour is on a round of the corner and there's a speed van sitting right there and nobody flashed me to warn me it was there. What a scummy move. Thanks for watching. <laughs> if you're still watching this point, congratulations. You're one of the few generals out there who keep on going to the very end. You're brilliant. Uh, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and until the next time, I'll see you on the far side of the bloody speed van, scumbags. That's just not fair. Not fair, it's not right. That's not a fair game. That's not a fair, a fair cop, your honor. It's not it, it's just not fair.